Hey everybody, my name's Tony with Flare Boards and I'm gonna show you how I make my very own skateboards. All right, the process begins by finding the type of wood that you're gonna use for your skateboard. Now I use hardwood Canadian maple just because it's the American standard for skateboards. Now a skateboard is comprised of seven thin sheets of veneer with three different particular types of uh, sheets of wood. Uh, the first layer is what we call the face of the deck, which is used on the top and bottom of the deck, just like the smoothest side. When you get it from the distributor, usually it's already the smoothest one. The second one is called a core, and this isn't as particularly smooth, but it's basically an identical image to this one, but it's used as just a support. The next one is what's called a crossband. Now this goes in a sense against the grain of the skateboard which normally goes this way. Now this is so the board just doesn't snap in half directly once you apply a lot of pressure to the skateboard. Then the next one is another core. Then we have another crossband which then again goes this way. Then we have another core and then the last one we have another face which is just an identical replica of the top smooth face. As for glue I chose to use Type On 2 Type On 2 works perfect for skateboards. Type On 1 is just as good as Type On 2, only thing that it isn't water resistant. And Type On 3 is actually waterproof. Now Type On 2 is the best for the price. It's about $17 for a gallon jug, which produces about seven skateboards. So it's pretty nice. All right, a big problem of mine when I first started making skateboards was uh, how much glue do I actually use? Now, typically, it's good to use a happy medium between a lot and not that much, so just a medium amount. Uh, I had to learn the hard way with using too little and having delamination problems and using too much, which making it really hard to actually cut the skateboard. Uh, but uh, you basically will find your happy medium. Uh, just keep trying. I mean, uh, usually the first time your skateboard is not going to be the best, but you learn with time. Um, so I use, right now I'm using just the 16 ounce, but I usually use the glue. Uh, the big big gallon one and I used two big globs two well two medium sized globs in the middle and spread it around but for this one I'm just using uh, the 16 ounce like I said and just using about two paths back and forth and I'm thinking that should be good enough but uh, also I, you have to make sure to do actually both sides of the skateboard not just one of them and then place the other one because then you'll have another delamination problem um, so I'm gonna fast it forward for you guys and this is what, how it goes Alright, and there you have it. One skateboard, all glued up. Basically, I'm just going to bag this one and repeat the process. And it's all ready for the press after that. Alright, now it's time to just put the decks in the press. Now, for this method, um, I chose to make my own skateboard press um, with steel. Uh, you can make it out of wood, you can use different, var like various, various different types of uh, ways to make a skateboard press but I thought this was the most efficient because I was actually able to use the 20 ton jack um, to do about three or four boards at a time so it's really nice uh, what I'm doing right now is just lining everything up so it matches the concave this part's really crucial because if you mess it up it can make the whole balance of the board uh, Offset. Uh, once again, this has a lot to uh, the type of press you use has to do with um, whether your skateboard is going to delaminate or not. Now, delamination is just having the thins of thin sheets of veneer uh, basically lose its tackiness and just kind of flops apart. Um, you can see this if you ever had a board that has like kind of cracked in the middle or anything, but. Yeah, it looks like everything's set. <laughs> 
Once the wood's in the press, it stays in there for about 18 hours just to fully dry. Alright, once again, this is what the actual press looks like. It's a 20 ton press made with steel. I just used the bottleneck jack and used the springs to hold up the base plate. And there's the mold. Now, I've actually experienced with making my own molds, but it's actually quite hard to do. I have one over here that I tried to make myself. I spent about 12 hours on the actual process of trying to make it, only to figure out that it didn't work at all. Um, it's really hard to uh, get all the cuts and send it down correctly um, without like a CNC router or sander. Um, and just as well is over here, I have broken concrete slabs. Um, this was another process I tried to make work, but did not work, unfortunately. Um, if I was to do it again, I'd use rhubarb and a bunch of other stuff to actually make it um, hold a lot better and a better uh, base of concrete. But that's why I went with the actual um, uh, uh, bot press, no, the, the bot mold. It was about $150 just for the mold, which is actually a great deal because they sell for about $400 any kind CNC made. Now it's really discouraging to actually like spend that much time on something like that and not have it work, but it was a good reward in actually buying this thing because it actually worked with the press that I made myself. And you can get all the plans on any DIY site for this uh, type of press. I like to lay them out for about three days just to make sure they cure. And this is just to ensure any defects or anything, no, uh, well, just make sure that the wood's completely dry before I make any kinds of cuts. Alrighty, once the actual wood is cured, I use a template, just a size 8 template, and kind of just um, line everything up. And once it's all lined up, I go ahead and use an expo marker, and I use an expo because it's a little thicker. And it's uh, a lot easier when I try to um, sand off the edges. It gives me a better guideline to follow. Okay, so I'm going to start cut by cutting it with a scroll saw. Uh, I'm just going to make a rough cut and then I'm going to start sanding. Alright, now it's all cut out. Time to start shaping the board. Okay, so I use a belt sander and the circular part on the sander to actually uh, shape my boards just to make so it's all perfect before I do my routing. Now that I finished shaping the skateboard, now it's time to do the drill holes. Now I use the template deck um, like I did to cut out and I use clamps just to secure them. And then I start drilling. Done. After drilling the holes, now it's time to route the skateboard.
All right, so the routing just basically just cuts off the edges and makes it a lot smoother, more of the shape of the skateboard. I'm just gonna use the belt sander to sand out any imperfections. Now that it's finished, it's time to do the fun part, which is the graphic. Okay, for my designs, I use spray paint, and then when I'm all done, I use uh, around three or four coats of polyurethane to just really seal it in, so if you're ever doing a board slide or anything, it doesn't come off. Um, for this particular design, I'm going to be doing a custom skateboard. Uh, I'm going to do about three, four um, base coats of black. I'm also going to use uh, some stencils and do some mosaic art along with a logo. I'm going to start with the base coating right now. All right, I'm gonna speed up the process so you can guys can see how it's done. So I added a logo, my customer, and now it's off to clear coating. I do about three coats of polyurethane finish um, just to protect the board and give it a good shine. Um, this is just to ensure that no moisture will get in and just overall protect the design. And that's pretty much it. Alrighty guys, thanks so much for watching this video. Uh, be sure to like and subscribe. And if you're interested in snagging your own flare board, just go to flareboards.com. Uh, be sure to follow me on any major platform, especially Instagram. That's my main one. Uh, just search flare boards or there's a link in the description. Thanks again so much for watching.